Hi there, you're tuning in for Fresh Breath 2 and looking at the garage clips. You're probably wondering, what do I do with this? You got it most likely when you purchased your double leg pulley system and you have something called an ankle harness. When you go through our personal training course, we have a lot of exercises we show you with this, but I'm gonna show you a way to incorporate it within this workout. You don't necessarily have to use the ankle harness. You can also use, rather the ankle cuff, you can also use the ankle harness. But since you have one, most likely, and you haven't used it, I'm going to incorporate it into this workout for you. So here's Nicole. She's going to help us out. There is an aspect of our workout that we go through when we add the double leg pulleys. Now, some people may become really good at the exercises with the stag and the beat and the frogs. So what I'm going to do here is take away a harness. And what I'm going to do is put on the ankle cuff. So it's very easy. Voila. And you're thinking, okay, where do I uh, attach it? Well, when they get in the position and they come back, you attach it so that when they're pulling down, they have a good line of pull, which I'm sure you remember from your personal training course, the importance of an appropriate line of pull. I am just going to guesstimate here, and once she's in the position, I can figure out what, if she needs a change with one of those pin placements, or rather, carabiner placements. So then what I do is I take off the other harness, and where do you think I put this? On the glide board. There you go. All right, so now both harnesses are off. Nicole here is going to straddle. She's going to push the glide board up. She's going to lie on her back. She'll put one foot on home base, which we'll call the toe bar, and she's going to slide her foot into the ankle cuff. Now, the ankle cuff's a little different. Yep, it can go around here. Then it goes around the ankle, hence <laughs> ankle cuff. And then, uh, actually, I should have you put it on so you can demonstrate how easy it is as the participant to put it on. And it actually is at a really good pl placement for the carabiner because she's going to pull directly down. So when I, once she feels secure, I then say, all your weight's going to be pulling with this leg. So we want to make sure she has enough stability. So she might put this leg on the glide board, and that's going to help stabilize her pelvis just a little bit. So from here, she can pull straight down, all the way down, beautiful. And then all the way up. That's a way to increase range of motion. You might hear that people want that pushing down sensation. So if they want that, and they say they're really long-limbed, remember you always have those cable extensions that you can add on to from here. Now you're working with the client. They understand the sensation. Maybe you have them do a little bit of a circle with the legs. So they have the range of motion. Maybe you might have them just do that stag component of where they press down, and they're just going to come out, and then they're just going to come in straight back in. Beautiful. So they're adding one dimension of it. And maybe they just press down and they come out and just come right to my hand for me. Beautiful. Now, how about this? How about if she bends her knee up like a figure four? Yep, and then she presses out. So she's kind of going into a frog and mimicking the stag a little bit. So she has this dimension down. She, you're looking at her. Her pelvis is doing really well. It's nice and controlled. All right, we want to take it up a notch. So what do we do? We lift the other leg. So from here, she can go into stag where she presses out with one and then she switches. Now remember during any of these double leg pulley exercises, you can set that intention and say, don't let the glide board move or allow that glide board to move with the movement. So you set the intention beforehand and then you stick with it. She's doing a, a phenomenal job of stag and then you can go into beats here where you click the heels and then you come in, you press out and click you can also go into frog, where your heels stay in that frog position, that turned out position. And here's something that we tend to see a lot of. We see a lot of pushing out. It's actually more of a pushing down, where you're opening up the hips, and then you're coming back up. Nice demonstration. So the idea is to kind of keep that hip and, and rather the knee angle the same, and you're opening up the hips. Now, some things you want to watch for here is that Nicole immediately went to her fingertips on her pelvis and her thumbs towards her rib cage because the arch tends to happen more from the low back. So as soon as you add that unilateral dimension in, you have to think, okay, what are those compensations I tend to see when people go into the double leg pulleys? 
You tend to see the arching of the back. You tend to see the loss of control of the rib cage. What people don't necessarily recognize is the tension that occurs in the neck. There's a lot of clenching of the jaw when something's new, and you'll see them either hyperextending or putting too much pressure under their neck as they try to figure out, what am I supposed to be doing? Because if your back's struggling, it's gonna call on a friend, and the most likely friend will be the neck. So that's just a tip of how to actually make this exercise a little bit more challenging, and hopefully it will bring a new dimension to those participants that have been using the double leg pulleys for a while.